All right, guys, we're back in the Q-Tips room. Now I'm gonna go through 10 shots. If you wanna improve and become a much better snooker player, these are 10 shots that you've gotta have in your armory. First one, obviously, the start of a game, you've gotta have a good break off. You don't wanna be leaving the cue ball in the middle of the table. You wanna get the cue ball back to the bolt cushions. We're playing, the cue ball's pretty close to the brown. I'd say inch or two away from the brown. We're aiming for the last red. We're aiming about halfway up the cue ball, maybe even 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 higher than halfway, but with right hand side, run inside. It's your choice whether you want to go this side of the brown or that side of the brown. And I prefer hitting a break with right hand side. Some people prefer going this way with left hand side. But both shots are the same. It's run inside to come off two two cushions, three cushions, and try and get the cue ball as close to this bolt cushion as possible. Okay, the cue ball's not tight in the bolt cushion, but you can see I've got the snooker behind the green, no reds on, so that's the start of the frame. Straight away, you've got your opponent under pressure. A really good shot to have and to be able to regularly play well is what we've, we say in commentary, a shot to nothing, and it comes after a poor break-off. We've seen previously how important it is to get the cue ball off the break-off on the bolt cushion, or at least behind the green. Take this instance, uh, we haven't been able to do that. So we've left our opponent this red. We used to call it a shot to nothing because Players used to play this red quite hard. If you miss it, my interpretation is nothing's gone wrong because the cue ball is going to come back here to safety, even if you miss it. But players now play this really positively. They play it quite so they land short of the bolt colours. So sometimes if they miss it, something can go wrong. You can leave the red. But it's a really important shot to have because also it puts pressure on your opponent's break off. It means if you get this shot this time, the next time they break off, they're under real pressure to get a good cue ball. Come round. Have a look at the pot and point. I'm not playing this with any side. It's, I think, playing ball here because over distance, any side in the cue ball is going to deviate and it's going to exaggerate so much. So I think once you've got the pot and point, it's playing ball, but it's obviously stunned because you're trying to get the cue ball back up the table. And then it's just about delivering the cue straight line smoothly and keeping your head still. So you can see, it's kind of the perfect example of a shot to nothing because if I'd missed it, nothing to lose. I mean, I've lost nothing in the game because I've still got it safe. I've not really got the angle to get down for the reds or, or keep a break going, but at least, I mean, I just need to do this. You've got your opponent in trouble and complete control of the frame. Another important shot that you've got to have in your game is blue into the pack. In terms of break building, obviously we'll discuss going into the pack from the black, but the optimum ball to use to split the pack open, and I think my favorite way is going in off the blue, and it's such an important shot. You see it so often on the tournaments, on the TV, players playing the blue into the bunch. I always say in commentary, the principle is to hit the pink full in the face. If you do that, you keep the cue ball in the middle of the table, and then 99 times, 98 times out of 100, you're on a red. You're very unlucky not to be. So this is a really, really important shot to have in your repertoire and to be able to play well again and again. In your club, your table might be slower uh, or faster than this one. So that depends on, on how the balls will react when, when, when you go into the pink. If it's a really slow table, you'll have to hit it really hard to open the reds up. If it's a fast table, maybe not quite so hard, but I'm going to play this full power. So I'm getting low on the cue ball. So the cue ball is hopefully going to go full in the face into the pink and stay round about the middle of the table. And it's important to keep very still in this, deliver the cue very smoothly. Okay, hit that pretty well. I didn't lose the cue ball to any of the cushions. Kept the cue ball quite central. Unfortunately, a red went in that you can't legislate for. That's just bad luck. But if the red doesn't go in, it's not a bad result, actually. I've got a choice of a couple of reds in the corner pocket. Another very important shot to know how to play well, how to get the cue ball in and out of bulk. The reason it's important is because sometimes you'll play position for the blue to come this side of the blue, but you'll land short. Uh, you see it happen so often on TV. Various ways of playing this. Let's say you're here and you're playing for this red into this corner. So your choices are in between yellow and brown off the bulk cushion with check side, which is right hand side. So the cue ball comes down and back up in a straight line. So in between the yellow and brown twice, round about here for the, the red. You could play with run inside, left hand side, so off this cushion, it then goes to the side cushion and down here. This would be my preferred way of doing it. You're trying to avoid the yellow and brown twice 
the first way. You only have to avoid them once doing the other way, so it makes sense that it's easier. So this is running side for this red in here. So it's left-hand side of the bulk cushion, side cushion, and trying to bring the cue ball anywhere sort of around this area. Now you see the running side take effect. Two cushions and nicely on the red. If, for example, you want to play for this red into this corner, you could play the check side shot to come down in a straight line. Again, you've got to avoid the bulk color twice. My preferred option would be in between green and brown this way with right hand side. So it hits the cushion, comes here and goes down. So again, you're only trying to avoid a bulk color once on the way down, not on the way back up again. We don't want to make contact with the brown. We go, go slightly lower on the cue ball just to make sure we get more stun to go in between green and brown. But we've got that run inside the right hand side, this cushion, this cushion, and again, somewhere back to where we started. There's a run inside of two cushions into this area. We now have a chance to get the red. So an important shot because as you say, you always land I think in any frame of snooker when you're in the balls, you always land short in the blue sometime. So it's important to know, A, your options and how to get in and out of bulk, and B, whether you play run inside, check side, or whatever. You get to this stage of a frame, you need blue, pink, and black to win. The last thing you want to do is muck up your position on the blue. So it's important to be perfect on the pink. Again, you've got options how to play it, but let's, let's do the way that the pros play it. It's with check side, it's just using one cushion, because probably the more cushions you use, the, the more chance of getting in trouble positionally. So it's, it's just stunning off the cushion here. With check side, in this instance, it's left-hand side. If you were that side of the blue coming down there, it would be right-hand side. So it's left-hand side in this instance. And the reason you want to put off this cushion, the check side will bring the cue ball up in a straight line. Now it's important that we get past straight, past the level of being straight in the pink. You know, the, 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 the straight line is obviously from the middle pocket pink there. So anything short of sort of this line here, you're in trouble because you've either got to go all around the table with a cue ball to get in the black or drop it in and leave yourself a really, really difficult black off a spot. The last, the last thing you want if you want to clear up and win the frame. So a really important shot uh, to be able to play well time after time after time. That's why the pros practice these shots. So it's automatic. So it's important that you guys practice it as well. So it's automatic in your repertoire. So it's about halfway up the cue ball, left-hand side, not too much side required here because you're not hitting it too hard. Off the cushion, up in a straight line, and you've gone past straight in the pink, so now you've got a natural angle just to stun for the black. So you made it easy, that's the important thing in snooker. Make every shot easy. A fantastic shot to have in your armory and to be able to play well. And you're going to impress your mates as well because the banana shot, as we call it, is a really cool shot. The first person I've ever seen do it was Alex Higgins on TV. It's a shot where, we got, say you've got a position here on the table, you want to get position on the black into the same pocket. Now, in, instead of, you might think we've got to come up and down the table, pot the red and have the cue ball come you know, travel 24 feet to get on the black. You can play a banana shot, which is basically lots of top spin, lots of pace. So when you pot the red, the cue ball hits the cushion. You do need a sort of semi new cloth to do this because you need the cue ball to be able to grip once it's hit the cushion. So the top spin is working like this. So when it hits the cushion, it actually goes back in behind the black for the black to the same pocket. So it arcs round the black. That's why we call it banana shot. You're aiming to pot the red, not, not full in the face here, little, little, maybe a little bit of angle, maybe three quarters ball um, to, to the right of the red, because you need the angle to bring the cue ball across the table. But it's basically top spin, so high up the cue ball, middle of the cue ball, and hit it nice and hard. So the cue ball arcs around the black, and you've got the black into the same pocket. Now your mates are impressed. They'll say, where'd you learn that skill? Stephen Henry's Q-tips, that's where. I think another really important shot to recognize when you're actually break building, you're gonna have situations like this where you're playing for the, wanna play for the black after this red, you're not straight or high, so that'd be easy to stun for the black, but you finish low, you've got two choices. I always think the sort of safer choice is to play the screw shot, which is the one I'll demonstrate, because then the cue ball is coming back this way and you kind of, you kind of know you're gonna have a shot at the black. The other way is to play topspin, 
where I always think I think it's more difficult to control the cue ball in the top spin one because you're judging how fast it's coming off this red. And top spin, I think you've got less control than backspin. So I would always favour in this situation, unless you had reds in the way here and you're frankly snookering yourself, I'd always favour playing the screw shot off the bunch rather than the top spin shot. Now the important thing here is you've got to have your pot and point sorted out because it's so easy to get down. Okay, I'm going to pot this red, screw off the bunch. I am, so, you, so you get down, you're looking at the bunch, you're looking at the black and you completely take your eyes off the pot. So the lesson here is obviously being able to pot the red and get decent position. You're never 100% sure where the cue ball is going to end up because it's contacting other balls after you've played the shot. So you're kind of playing for this area on the, on the black, but you never, you know, very often you'll land too close to the cushion or I'd say if you play this shot 10 times, you're going to be absolutely plumb on the black, maybe three or four. And another little tip is if you can play this with a touch of right hand side, which is check side. So if the cue ball comes back to the cushion, it's going to hold. If it's playing ball, it might go up that way and you're even further from the black. If you want to go up for the blue, you play it with left hand side. So when it hits the cushion, it goes up there. But it's important to make sure you've committed to the shot. Low in the cue ball, obviously. I got the check side, you can see. And that is obviously the three of the four times out of 10 because I'm absolutely beautiful in the black and I'm going to clear up and win the frame. Obviously, when you're in the black, you're going to be scoring your, your high break. So it's important to have in your locker the best ways of, of playing blacks off the spot. There's, I'm going to show you two different ways here. So first of all is, is top spin. Both shots are going to be using two cushions with the cue ball. So it's coming using the cue ball opposite ways, if you like. First one is you're playing for this red into this corner pocket. So you need to come off this cushion, this cushion with top spin and run inside, which in this instance is left hand side. So it's important that the top spin one, I always think you can, the cue ball can run away from you. The, the sort of the, the next one I'm going to show you is the stun, where I think it's easier to control. So the top spin, especially on really quick tables and you're using run inside. So there's going to be a lot of acceleration on the cue ball. So it's about hitting this really smoothly and it's very easy to hit it too hard. So try and not over hit it, try and let the run inside do the work for you. The run inside will help the cue ball off the two cushions get into position for the red. So the important thing with that one is don't over hit it. So part of the same kind of shot, I'm still using two cushions. Obviously the, the more cushions you use in position, the more you can lose control of the cue ball, but there's sometimes it's unavoidable. I can't play one cushion because there's a red, red there. So this time it's for this red into the same pocket as the black. So it's, it's pretty much the same principles because both shots, you're trying to let the side do the work for you. So you don't have to hit it that hard. You can hit it smoothly. So here it's just below center, right side. Letting the side work the cue ball into the position you get in the red. So those are two shots that are really important to play well because you're letting the sides do the work for you. It means you don't have to overhit them. A very important shot to be able to play well is the straight blue into a corner pocket. Now obviously there's four corners, but there's an example here where you've lost position. You can't play the pink or the black, so you need to keep the break going. You've got a red here, so you've got this straight blue into the corner pocket. Now in commentary, we always call this um, kind of a pressure shot and one that the pros practice a lot. And, and I myself used to practice this for, for at least sort of an, an hour a day because it's, it's such an important shot. It's such a test of cueing because if you want to keep the break going, you've got to pot this blue, which is you know dead straight into the corner pocket. Um, if you miss it, you're leaving your opponent in to try and you know steal the frame from you. So it's an important shot, as, it, as, as I say, it tests your technique. Um, if it's a big match, it tests your bottle, whether you can do it under pressure. Really, Important to obviously middle of the cue ball, cue straight. Pot the blue and you can pot that red there and keep the break going. An important shot to play well is a bulk color, getting back down towards the reds, get nicely positioned on the reds. Um, very often you'll come too far for the blue, so it's bulk color required to, to keep the break going basically. Uh, I've set up the yellow here, it could all quite easily be the green or the brown. There's two ways to play. You could play it playing ball 
um, and obviously that makes the pot more reliable. But the pros will use always use a little bit of run inside just to help the cue ball. And the reason they do that is so they don't have to hit it as hard. They can basically let the side do the work for them. So I'm going to play it the professional way and come off the cushion with a bit of run inside, left hand side. So the cue ball is going to come off the cushion and, and down the table um, for this red. The thing with playing ball is if you're in the middle of the cue ball and it comes off this cushion, it can come off quite square. It can come off in quite a square angle. And you might end up around about here having to use the rest, where the, 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 the run inside kind of keeps the, the cue ball going in a nice line. And so it's around this area where you don't have to use the rest. And again, it means you don't have to hit it that hard. So I'm going about halfway up the cue ball, a little bit of left hand side, just to help that cue ball. Say, so come down that side of the table, no need to use the rest, nicely on the red. So, two ways of playing it. Playing ball is okay, but if you want to play the pro way, a little bit of run inside.